something in the order of five months exploring this delta front region. And you saw the rover traverse in, in that first map that he showed. This image that you're looking at, I like very much because uh, the team worked very hard to find two different types of samples to collect from the delta front. And we ended up finding them uh, only about 20 meters apart. These two rocks named Skinner Ridge on the right and Wildcat Ridge on the left are very different. They each have high science value uh, for quite different purposes that I'm gonna explain. Skinner Ridge, as Ken mentioned, um, is a sandstone. It's a fine to medium grain sandstone. It contains, importantly, a quite diverse mixture of lithologies, meaning that it has a whole bunch of rocky material that was potentially transported into Jezero Crater from hundreds of kilometers outside Jezero. That's important because this is giving us material from a very far distance that the rover will, will not visit in this mission. Wildcat Ridge on the left, on the other hand, is a very different type of sedimentary rock. It is a fine-grained uh, sulfate-bearing mudstone that also contains clays. And interestingly, this appears to have formed in salty water, possibly during the lake evaporation stage. So at some point, the lake filled up with water, and as that evaporated, it appears that this rock on the left formed. This is really important that this has sulfate in it and also clays, because that means that this rock has high potential for biosignature preservation, meaning that if there were biosignatures in this vicinity when that rock formed, this is precisely the type of material that will preserve that for us to study when uh, they come back to Earth. So what we have here is both of these rocks are composed of sediments that were transported by liquid water. They were both deposited into a lake, and then they subsequently experienced aqueous alterations, alterations also involving water, and cementation after deposition. Thus, these rocks formed in and record conditions of a habitable environment. And the next slide, please. In this image, you can see the layering that Ken mentioned up on Rocky Top. And I'm just showing you this because you can see the rover arm and you can see Skinner Ridge in, in the lower part of this image. And if you look, you'll notice that there is an abrasion patch. There's a, a very light colored circular uh, uh, position in that rock that I'm gonna zoom in now. Um, so if we can have the next slide. And what you're seeing here is a close-up Watson image of this abrasion patch. And every time I look at this sort of image, let's uh, remark on how absolutely wonderful this is. We were looking at a very, very small region of space, known as the five millimeter scale bar. Uh, this is on Mars, right? And we're looking, and Sananda's gonna show us even a higher resolution image. We're looking in very, very fine detail. And what I'd like you to notice in this rock is that there are color variations that we can see. And we can also see that there are um, grains that appear to have been rounded. These indicate that this material, the sediment, these bits of Mars in the rock uh, form have been transported down a river and deposited into Jezero Lake. Can I have the next slide, please? And this image here is just showing that the two cores that we collected from that rock are absolutely fantastic. It does not get any better than this. What you're looking at is the, the bottom of the core after we drilled it out of the rock. And both of these cores are full. They're, they're uh, as, as nice of a core as we have collected on this mission. And importantly, these materials will enable all sorts of science to happen, as Ken mentioned. Uh, upon return to Earth in laboratories on Earth. And importantly, uh, we can determine when each one of these little bits of rocky material crystallized in this rock. In addition to that, we can also determine when the cementation, when this rock was cemented together uh, in principle. We can learn a lot about the chemistry of the fluids that transported this rock, things like the temperature of that cementation. So we can learn a lot about when this material was deposited. Can I have the next slide, please? So this is now showing an image of the, the Wildcat Ridge, the other uh, sampling location. And what you see in this image are the, the abrasion, that circle on the right, that we'll hear more about from Sunanda in a minute, and those two core locations on the left. So once again, we, we had an absolutely successful uh, coring at this rock. Can I have the next slide, please? 
And these are the two cores from this rock. Again, the cores are both full. These are essentially slam dunk in terms of coring uh, these uh, two very important rocks at the, at the front of the delta. Can I have the next slide, please? And now when you look at the close-up Watson image on the right of the Wildcat Ridge, I hope that you can all see that these are two very different looking rocks. Specifically, you can see that the one on the right is much lighter in color. It's relatively uniform uh, and it is fine grained. As I mentioned, it is also rich in sulfates. And all of this is very important because these are the ingredients, this is, these are the qualities of rock that we're looking for that have high potential for biosignature preservation. So to summarize, both of these samples that we've collected from these two rocks record a paleo environment and environmental conditions of a thermally habitable environment. Both of these have very high scientific value for the next generation of scientists when these return to Earth to be studied in the laboratories that you've heard about. Um, I think it's safe to say that these are two of the most important samples that we will collect on this mission, and we're all very excited about what we've found.